If you're a player that feels like you make a great practice swing, but then when you make a real swing, it looks nothing like it. Let's go through and talk about why that is more than likely the case. The biggest issue is once you throw intent to hit a golf ball in, the body is almost always going to compensate to try to make sure that face is as square as possible so you can hit it as straight as possible. So while it may not look the best when you make a real swing, it is your body's way of trying to create some sort of compensation for something that's going on earlier, typically the club face. So I see a ton of players that will get set up next to their golf ball that they're about to hit, make what they think is a great backswing, getting into a good position, and then they'll work down feeling that club work real nice and shallow, they'll rotate, and then they'll look like they get to a real nice follow through and wonder why they can't do that in the real swing. Now all of a sudden, they start getting a little bit more over the top or they start to kind of scoop through impact where their lead arm breaks down and they start to get very scoopy with this wrist as they start to lose the cl uh, club kind of passing in front of the hands here. Where in their practice swing, they feel like they can really keep this golf club uh, handle in front of the club head, get some nice shaffling, get the body open, shallow, but then all of a sudden you hit a ball and you get very jumpy and scoopy. So a lot of times, again, the club face is going to be the culprit here, where I see this quite a bit, especially when players semi golf swings where they are feeling a little bit more of a practice swing in a uh, online lesson or in person, and we kind of compare the two and see what the big difference is. And almost always, the club face is wide open on the practice swing. So when I see players that will think they are getting the club into a very good position, they'll get up to the top, they'll shallow the club real nice, and then if we freeze at impact, we'll see that this club face is pointing 45 degrees out to this right-hand side where if they maintain the angle and they did try to swing like they do during their practice swing, that ball is going to come out dead right. So your body's way of trying to compensate is usually some sort of scooping move to try to close the club face, and that is where the real swing all of a sudden does not look quite as good. So this is where it comes down to you have to find the root cause of kind of why is that club face open. And when you do make practice swings, I don't really want you going full speed, trying to get into positions that kind of look good. You have to get yourself in the correct position, sort of exaggerating why it's happening. So a uh, kind of problem I ran into with a recent player was a lot of extension in the lead wrist, where this wrist was extremely cupped. And typically what that is going to do is open this club face up quite a bit. So as he goes up to the top of the swing, face is very cupped, would feel like that club would shallow and work underneath. But as this wrist starts to cup, that face is going to open. You're going to see this golf club go a little bit more toe down or into an open position there. So typically as that happens, that club is going to open. So now if he just really focuses on getting the club to lower during a practice swing, but this wrist is still extremely cupped, yes, the body positions and the hand positions may look okay, but that face is wide open. So what's he going to do at impact? Get very flippy. And that is where he's going to get, start to scoop a little bit more. And we wouldn't love the uh, kind of the look at impact, but it was everything that was going on beforehand. So I'm not a fan of taking full practice swings. So you will see very few high level players taking full practice swings unless you are trying to uh, kind of gear the nervous system up for speed or something like that. So you'll see a player like Bryson really starting to swing aggressively for practice swings, trying to ramp the body up. But most of us aren't trying to do that. It's, ideally, we need to get into proper positions. And this is where I'm a big fan of exaggerated feels. So rather than getting here, if you know that your habit is you start to cup this wrist at the top, rather than getting next to it and kind of making a full swing where you get to the top, and really try to drop that club underneath doing what you think kind of looks good, you need to really slow it down and make sure you're exaggerating those positions. So this player, we would work up to the top, really feel like as we get to the top of the swing, that wrist starts to bow excessively. This is where you have to over-exaggerate these practice feels because once you go full speed, you're really going to settle somewhere in the middle. So rather than taking full practice swings, the practice swings and the practice reps now became sort of nailing our takeaway position, working up to the top, making sure that wrist had a little bit more bow to it. That kept that face nice and square. Now we could rotate down. That face is going to be much more square than it was. So rather than taking a full speed swing, it was something that was very slow and deliberate, making sure we were hitting these positions to over exaggerate it. And then we would step up, hit a shot going a little bit more full speed. But that is where the practice swing is not always going to be indicative of what your real swing is going to look like. And then once you throw the ball into play, that is why things are going to change. So rather than taking slow practice swings, work with a coach, find out why that face is so open or why you're compensating the way you are. Really slow your practice swings down, repeating these nice, slow, exaggerated positions, then go ahead and hit shots. And I guarantee you it is going to start to improve your ball striking.